Hi, it's Billy from Sweetie Darling and today I'm going to show you how to make a winter wonderland parcel cake. If you need to see how to ice a cake in more detail, there is a link underneath this video through to another tutorial of mine where I go through from scratch to ice and finish a cake. But for this one, I'm starting with a pre-iced cake and we're going to concentrate on the decorating techniques. So for the berries, I'm rolling balls of flour paste and then I've got little wires which I have bent hooks into the end of. And I'm dipping the end of that wire, so the hooked end, in water and then threading that through the berry. Pulling it through, the hook is going to attach inside the paste and leave a tiny little hole in the top which looks like what would be on a berry. I'm then just leaving those to dry and once they are dry I'll use some florist tape just to tape them together in little groups of three or leave them individual so I can put them into the cake at the end on their own. For the leaves I'm just rolling out flour paste very thinly and then using a couple of different leaf cutters that I have to cut out some leaf shapes. I'm then squashing the leaf shapes between a veiner to give some sort of detail on the surface of the leaf instead of just having them looking completely flat. These can then be left to dry and added in at the end. For the pine cone I've got a brown colour flour paste. I'm using polystyrene ball as the centre. Squish a bit of brown onto the top of the polystyrene so that as I build the pine cone up in the middle, you can't see any white through it. For the pine cone pieces, I'm rolling little balls of paste and then squashing them down between two of my fingers and then pinching one end to flatten it. Once that end is flattened, I can curve it round just gently so there's a bit of depth and curve to each pine cone piece. You have to make quite a lot of those to do one pine cone. And to start assembling the pine cone, you want to pick some sort of small and narrow pieces and then stick close to the top of where we put the brown paste on the polystyrene ball and sort of interweave those together so you tuck one inside the other almost as if it's, they're coming from the centre and then you just continue from the top and work your way down overlapping the little pine cone pieces until you get to the bottom and you can make your pine cones as closed or as open as you want them just by adjusting the position you put on your pine cone pieces. For the winter flowers they are based on a rose they're just a bit more ruffly and frilly and less fussy than what an actual rose is. Again I've used a polystyrene ball from the middle the same as the pine cones and I'm rolling out flower paste very thinly and then cutting out some petals using a rose petal cutter. Each petal that is cut out is softened on a foam pad using a ball tool so I'm just thinning and frilling the outside edge. Now normally on a rose I would go a bit softer. For this flower I want it really quite ruffly so I'm going a bit harder and then repeating the softening process until the, the edge of the petal is really ruffled up. Now the first petal you want to stick on is one which you want to have unfurling from the centre. Once that one pencil is on you can attach three petals for your next layer keep them at the same height as whatever your center one is at now stick one petal down bring your second one in overlap it over the first one and then your third one overlap it over the second one and the first one once you've done your layer of three you can repeat the process with a layer of five and then if you want to with a layer of seven until your rose is a little bit or your flower is a little bit bigger if you need to see a more detailed tutorial on how to make an actual rose I will link to that video underneath here as well the next bit I want to do are the strips of ribbon over the cake and for that I'm rolling a section of fondant but I know when I cut the strip from it it will be long enough to go up one side of the cake across the top and down the other side of the cake. Now to get a pattern on it I'm using an Evil Cake Genius stencil and it's the linen texture mesh stencil. Now I wanted a silvery effect ribbon so to get silver for this you want to mix up some silver paint. So I've done Rolcom silver with a little bit of white alcohol and then I've added some piping jelly to it so it makes it much more spreadable. That's all mixed around and then I can lay my stencil over my fondant, spread the silver pipe and jelly paste across it. When I then peel the stencil away it's left the pattern underneath in a really lovely silver. I can then cut strips from this, paint water onto my cake and lay the strips over my cake. Once the strips of ribbon fondant are on I can then start adding my other decorations. So you can either use water or royal icing to start attaching bits. So I put some roses on there, some pine cones, some leaves and then for the berries they're on wires so technically you're not allowed to push wires directly into cake. Now if you've watched my Cake International Shopping Haul video you'll know I picked up some safety seals which is like a wax, a food safe wax that you can melt and dip things in to form a barrier around them so you can then push them straight into a cake. So I tried this for the first time with these berries and it's really amazing, really, really good. But you literally just dip the berries in, pull it out. It says to leave them for about 20 minutes to set, but I don't know if it's because these were quite thin, but they set pretty much immediately. I could, I could touch them. It was a very smooth, protective barrier against the wire, which means I can now push my berries straight into the cake. So anywhere there was a gap, anywhere that I felt needed filling in, I could push a cluster of berries or the individual ones. And the final touch I want to add to my cake is some little snowy pieces on my pine cone. So for that, I'm using royal icing and a tiny palette knife just to dab on some royal icing around the 
the top edges of my pine cone pieces. And it just makes it look really frosty and wintry. And that's it, that's how to make a winter wonderland parcel cake. Don't forget the links to the other videos are underneath this one and the link through to the blog tutorial with all the written instructions and the products that I use is also straight underneath this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and click that subscribe button. There'll be brand new videos every single Monday. Thanks for watching and I will see you next week.